Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to test and remove the oxygen sensors on this Opel Corsa C from 2003. So on this car you will find narrowband oxygen sensors, which means that you can test them with a voltmeter. So on this car, if I go ahead and plug in the scanner in the OBD2 port, I will also turn the key in the second position. You can see it has two trouble codes. One is for the heater circuit and one is pointing out that there is something wrong with the circuit. So basically the both codes point out the same problem. Now let's say you want to keep the car for a long time with the key in the second position. It's a good idea to put a charger on your battery. So the first thing I'm going to do since I have a scanner, I will turn the car. I can have a look on live data on both sensors. As you can see, we've got the bank one sensor one. It's still heating up and the bank one sensor two begins to heat up. So based on this live data, you can see the sensor two is actually heating up faster compared to the sensor one, which in reality should be the other way around because the sensor one is closer to the exhaust manifold. Sensor two will always heat up later because it's further away from the gases. And you can see as well on the dashboard, we've got the check engine light because I started the car a couple of times before this. And If, for example, you've got a pending code, it will not... If, for example, you've got a pending code, it will not trigger the check engine light. But on this time, this one is confirmed, which will always trigger the check engine light. So let's go ahead and do some tests on this oxygen sensor number one. I'm gonna shut down the car, but I will still keep the key in the second position like that, so I can have my scanner on. So down here in the engine bay, you can find the first oxygen sensor. Pop off this cable. You just have to press on this tab very hard until it clicks and then you can pull it out. And on the sensor, you'll find four wires. And on the oxygen sensor connector, I will identify those two wires which are identical in color. Usually those two are for the heater. And in this situation, they are white. Sometimes you can find them black or red. So I'm going to test first these two wires which are supposed to be for the heater inside the oxygen sensor. For that, I will set up the voltmeter on ohms reading. I will go with, let's say, 2000 ohms because the resistance is usually between 5 and 10 ohms. Unfortunately, as you can see, there is no continuity, which means that at the end of these wires, there is no heating circuit. I'm gonna back probe as well the wires so I can be 100% sure that the readings are correct. Well, still nothing, as you can see. Another thing you can do is to inspect the wires at these points. Usually they are very well protected by these covers. Now I'm gonna have a look on the connector and see if the connector delivers 12 volts. That's also good to know for further investigations on this issue. So down here you can see I found the ground, which is that one down there. You can also look on the connector from the sensor and you've got this gray wire. This one is the ground, so I back probe the voltmeter accordingly. This ground is valid for the 12 volts input to the heater, to the signal wire from the heater and the signal wire for the information of the exhaust gases, 0.42 volts. And you can see this is the information the PCM is getting and is direct proportional with the amount of oxygen in the exhaust on the bank one sensor one and sensor two as well. It's exactly 0.43 as the voltmeter shows. Anyway, the voltmeter is not fast enough to catch the changes in one second. They can be two or three changes in one second. Therefore, a scan tool is much more reliable and clear. It was a confirmation that we've got the right input and output on the oxygen sensor connector from the PCM. As a further procedure, I'm going to go ahead and use a oxygen sensor socket. Hold your socket very well in there and open it up. Make sure it's cool enough to touch it. One another thing you can do if you suspect that the sensor one is broken, you can swap it with the sensor two. While I wait for the exhaust manifold to cool down, I can show you another cool test you can do with the oxygen sensor one. I'm gonna put the oxygen sensor on the support like that. 
and I will plug it back in the connector. So I will back probe with the voltmeter, the ground and the signal wire for the information. So even though the heater circuit is bad, the oxygen sensor can still read values if you heat it up. So this is what I'm going to do next. And you should be able to see an increase in reading and decrease as well. So let's see. Right. right now the sensor is on the operating temperature and you can see it's reading rich and now if I will blow on the oxygen now if I will blow on the oxygen sensor it will read lean you can see down there now it's rich lean Reach, lean. I actually don't have to. I actually don't have to. I actually don't have to blow the sensor. I just have to take out the blame. I just. I actually. So you don't need to blow on the sensor. You just take out the flame, and the oxygen sensor will read lean, lean, reach, lean, reach. Lean, reach. So on the voltmeter you can see the changes. Put the flame on, the voltage increases. When I take it out, it decreases. When I put it on, it increases to one volt. Take it out, decreases. You can see you get the same signal on the voltmeter as on the scan tool. Now I will leave this sensor to cool down and I'm going to go under the car in order to remove the second sensor. In most of the situations, you'll have to remove the exhaust pipe in order to fit your breaker bar on the oxygen sensor and twist it out. You'll have to undo these 12 millimeter nuts. There are three of them in this triangle. Just remove whatever it takes to lower this exhaust pipe. Make sure that you disconnect this oxygen sensor. And the connector is similar with sensor one. Like that. All right. So basically, this is my position, and I managed to loosen it up. So as you can see, the sensor two has a shorter wire, and therefore I cannot connect it directly to the sensor one plug. I will show you how it should be on the heater line, and on the sensor you will find two white wires. We've got nine ohms, which is within spec. So this is how a healthy oxygen sensor should look like with the heater core in good working condition and the wiring accordingly as well. And I want to show you what I noticed here. Down here the wire is a little bit damaged. It's almost going through the plastic cover and going to the wire itself. Another test you can do in between the ground and the signal wire the one which sends either 0.1 volts or 0.9 volts to the PCM. So between these two wires, not the heater wires, you can read again the resistance. And this time I will set it up to 2 million ohms. Now the sensor is cold, so therefore there is no continuity. But once I will heat it up, you need to see the resistance decreasing. And it does. That's because now the sensor is at the operating temperature. 
and when the sensor is on the operating temperature the electrons will be able to travel between metals inside the sensor I think is zirconium and platinum if I'm correct but anyway you got the idea when the sensor is hot the resistance should, should decrease and you should have full continuity between the ground and the signal wire from the oxygen sensor so yes guys, that's pretty much it. That's how you can test the oxygen sensor on this Opel Corsa C. Remember that there can be wideband oxygen sensors which cannot be tested with a regular voltmeter. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in comments below. And until next time, take care so I can see you soon.